Hi everybody, my name is Dennis, and in this video, I'm going to show you an AI I trained to play the Super Nintendo game Kirby's Avalanche. The AI is playing in the gameplay footage you're watching right now. If you've never played Kirby's Avalanche, it's similar to other two-player puzzle games like Tetris, Dr. Mario, and Tetris Attack, where you try to get combos and mess up the other player. You can see one happening right now, where the AI on the left just sent some rocks over to the right side and defeated Poppy Brothers Sr. pretty easily. So you play this game by matching four blobs of the same color together. When you match four or more blobs of the same color, they disappear and the other blobs above it fall down. But if you cause a chain reaction of matches to happen one after another while they are falling, that sends the rocks to the other side. The rocks have to be cleared away by popping blobs right next to them. At this point, I should note that according to the Kirby fan site, Wiki Kirby, Kirby's Avalanche is considered non-canon due to Kirby's rude behavior during the cutscenes. Here I have uh, enclosed some screen grabs of this rude behavior. Now I'll explain how the AI works. This agent was trained using software from OpenAI called Gem Retro. Here's the OpenAI logo. OpenAI is a company in San Francisco founded by Elon Musk and some other Silicon Valley heavyweights to research AI. Gem Retro is a software library shown here controlling a bunch of different games um, that OpenAI made for training AI to play classic video games from consoles like the Atari, the NES, and the Super Nintendo. It comes with a lot of popular games integrated already, as you can see here, but I had to add Kirby's Avalanche myself. Uh, for more information about integrating a new game into Gem Retro, see the link to my GitHub repo in the description. Gym Retro AI agents uh, generally use a technique called reinforcement learning. As you can see here within machine learning, there are a few different strategies. Supervised learning is something you would use like on the joke, joke app, not hot dog, where you have a bunch of data and it's labeled in a binary way, either that an image is a hot dog or not a hot dog. And then you train your AI using this data and when it tries to figure out what an image is, it finds out right away whether it was right or not. And unsupervised learning, you have unlabeled data. That, for example, is a bunch of users watching Netflix. And the Netflix algorithm finds some other users who have similar tastes to you and then recommends videos to you that you would like. And reinforcement learning, what we're using here, you have a reward function. So reinforcement learning works for a task that has a goal far in the future. For example, if you're playing chess, you want to win the game. You don't really care about capturing a pawn or something. There's just this one big objective. But in the meantime, you need to figure out how you're doing and try to do better. So within reinforcement learning, there are a few different algorithms to choose from. Uh, the brute is the one that I chose here. There's also something called PPO. There's something called Q learning. There's a lot more. They all have advantages and disadvantages. The brute is a good starter algorithm because it trains really easily on a home computer. So I chose the brute. If you want to know more about how the brute works under the hood, check out the original paper. I used the agent score as the reward function. That means the agent will learn to maximize the score. That isn't perfect since human players don't really care about the score. They try to beat their opponent. But when a player makes a chain reaction, they get way more points than they would from popping those blobs four at a time. I hoped that the extra points would make the agent discover chain reactions. Then the agent would try for chain reactions, which is a good strategy in the two-player game. You can see the score at the lower left corner. The footage you're viewing is the final form of the AI after over a week of training on my desktop computer. My AI did learn to make chain reactions and made it to stage 8 out of 13 on the hardest difficulty. 
progress plateaued against the stage eight opponent paint roller and I decided it wasn't gonna beat him, so I stopped the training. So how does this brute algorithm operate under the hood? It works by brute forcing a series of gamepad key presses, then playing the game over and over with minor variations on successful key presses. So if you know about like a tree data structure in computer science, you could store all of the key presses and how well they did and go back and try again and branch off in various directions and sometimes try something new because the previous one the previous time down this branch was second best but maybe uh, the best the current best branch is like a, a local maximum anyway so the brute doesn't really react to its opponent. The brute just tries out key presses. And therefore, the brute will only work on what you would call a deterministic save state. So it relies on the fact that when you load the ROM save state, you'll get the exact same sequence of blobs each time. This happens because of how randomness, known as RNG, works on classic cartridge-based games. As you can see, the Brute has serious limitations, but it trains very quickly, it trains on a CPU, and we got some pretty interesting results here. So back to the action, you can see that the, the Brute has made it to lo 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 and la la la, and seems to be in trouble, but once again it pulls a giant combo out of its hat, and it came back. This is almost as far as the agent gets. Uh, spoiler alert, it wins this match, and then it beats Bugsy. And Paint Roller comes after that. So that's it for this video. Do you have any ideas for training an agent that would make it further into this game? Or do you want to see a different classic game played by an AI? If you have any questions or ideas, please leave a comment. I could also make a video if anyone wants me to with details on how to add your own game to Gym Retro, make sure that it works, and try out some simple agents. Please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.